So today I'm making a meal that's fit for a king. No, seriously. Oh! <laughs> bon appetit. So welcome my home, everybody. We got a uh, we got high hopes for what's going on in this kitchen today. And I'm gonna go to Julia Child's Mastering the Art of French Cooking because I found a doozy of a recipe that I would very much like to tackle. It's called Tornetto Henri Cat. Henry the Fourth. It's something that's named after a king for reasons. Filet steaks with artichoke bottoms and béarnaise sauce. There's your reason. Now, if you heard of filet mignon, then you definitely know what a tornado is. They're both round cuts of steak coming from the tenderloin, and then typically with bacon wrapped around them or some sort of pork fat. We're going with bacon. And I've made something like this on the show once before, and the recipe knocked my socks off, literally. And then we got the artichoke bottoms, which I've made on the show before, and that's gonna go on top of the steak. And then in the cup part of that artichoke goes the béarnaise sauce, which I've also made on the show before. And I say all that out loud now, and I just realize that that's probably why it's named after a king, because the artichoke is like the crown on top of the steak. That's my theory. We're going to be revisiting a few sort of familiar recipes, putting those skills on display, and I got to decorate the platter with hot potatoes and asparagus. Serve immediately with a good red Bordeaux. <sighs> Let's make it happen. I got a good chunk of tenderloin right here. I'm gonna cut this into my steaks. Two and a half inches in diameter and an inch thick. Inch, inch. Slightly more than an inch thick with these, but as totally cool with me. All right, so in typical French fashion and Julia's recipes, I gotta blanch the bacon. And this is a step that causes confusion because he's like, why do you do it? Well, it's to tame the saltiness and the smokiness. But it is a technique that kind of drives me nuts at times because I find that after I've done it that the bacon is kind of falling apart and it's difficult to work with besides like cutting it up into little pieces. What I did is pick up thicker cuts of bacon this time, and hopefully the integrity of those shapes will stay intact. So step aside green measuring tape. We got bacon going into the simmering water for 10 minutes. There's a strip of bacon still on the cutting board. Why is that, Jamie? I'll tell you why, actually. It's because I would like to do an experiment. Cook one steak with blanched bacon, one with unblanched, and just see what the difference is. You know, could be everything, could be nothing. We'll find out. Wrap the bacon as nicely around the steak as I can, and then with some string, just kind of secure it in place and make a knot. The unblanched one, that's the blanched one. As per Julia's directions here, I'm gonna season the steak once it's been cooked. Keep the tornado in the fridge till we need them. Two artichokes. Thank you. And I'd like to thank the sponsor of this video, which is something I'm incredibly proud and excited to be part of. That is Maiden. Maiden designs professional quality products for the home cook. And you can find their cookware in three Michelin star restaurants. I'm still working on my stars over here, but I got my pans, I'm making progress. Now, since I received my Maiden cookware, I've been having a love affair. I've been having a love affair. And I've been learning how and when I should be using a certain type of pan. Now the carbon steel pan is the perfect hybrid between a cast iron and a stainless steel frying pan. It heats quickly and is light enough to maneuver on the stovetop and gives incredible heat control. I'm new to the carbon steel game and I've been using this pan often, just, you know, understanding it. So the more you use it and season it, it develops a natural non-stick surface. Also the ease of going from the stovetop to the oven, even an open flame up to 1200 degrees Fahrenheit, which I will not be demoing in this kitchen today, but I will cook my Tornetto in here. So check out Maiden's Carbon Steel Collection as well as their other cookware and use the link in my description to save on your order. Thank you for the sponsor, Maiden. I'm gonna get back to it. We gotta start off with blanching these artichokes. So in a saucepan, quarter cup of flour and just a bit of cold water to start. We're gonna beat that together until it becomes a paste. Then I gotta beat in the rest of the water, which equals around a quart. Four cups, liter, quart, whatever you wanna call it. Mix that together with the paste. Two tablespoons of lemon juice, teaspoon and a half of salt. Bring that to a boil. This is a solution that is used for preliminary cooking of any food which discolors easily, such as artichoke bottoms, which leads to my next task. First, I gotta cut the stems off each artichoke. 
the stem facing up, I just gotta like tear the leaves off. What Julia wants me to do is extract the bottom out of this thistle. And uh, I find it kind of wasteful because there's all these artichoke leaves I'm just throwing over to my right here. I'm thinking of roasting these after the show and making something out of that. But for today, we just need the bottom. So let's just focus on one task at a time. Cut off the remaining cone of leaves. Do the same for this one. Where the cone of leaves folds inward is where the bottom is. Cover the artichoke bottoms in the lemon juice so that they don't discolor. So removing all bits of green to expose the tender white parts. Whoops! I cut a little too much off the bottom of this one. That's a whoopsie daisy. Artichoke bottoms into the simmering solution. To a boil, I'm gonna keep those simmering for 30 minutes. I've been waiting for the artichokes to turn tender. While I was waiting, I thought it was a great opportunity to prep all my sides. They're all recipes that I have followed along to in other episodes many times before, so I figure I don't need to show you what's going on, I'll just reveal at the end. I just wanted to let you know it's all in the works. So the artichokes have done doing what they're doing, and they have cooled off in this liquid Completely. Uh, very interesting. Remove from liquid and wash under cold water. This is only my second time ever working with artichokes. The first time, I was petrified. Second time, uh, not as much. Check out this thistle in the inside there. That is like, the, it's like this very unappetizing, furry looking thing. This all has to go. If I remember correctly, I can just pull it out, right? Yes, you can just pull it out. Okay, do it very delicately. Okay, there we go. All that work with the artichokes for this. <laughs> the other artichoke bottom I've kind of manhandled here. Not kind of, I've completely manhandled it. So just kind of, oh shoot. Damn shame about this one, but we're just gonna carry on. What's the expression? Keep, keep moving, keep, keep on carrying on. Keep on and carry forward. Is that it? That sucks. That's great. <laughs> Salt, that's pathetic, I know. But you know, we gotta just keep going. Pepper, have some sort of like baking casserole dish, whatever you wanna call it. Tablespoon and a half of butter. Heat it up. Okay, bring this back over here. We'll get the artichoke bottoms in there. Was this supposed to be clarified butter? No, just any butter, okay. Get to baste them in the butter. Butter up some parchment paper, that goes on top into the middle of my preheated 325 degree F oven for 20 minutes until they are well heated through. Okay, so I am timing everything in my head. I'm gonna take the steaks out of the fridge now, half an hour before I'm gonna saute them because I wanna ensure an even cook. Okay, so we are gonna move on to this Baronet's sauce, which is not one of the five French mother sauces. That would be the Hollandaise sauce you're thinking of. It's always good to have a little reminder here. Hollandaise sauce is made of warmed egg yolks flavored with lemon juice into which butter is gradually incorporated to make a thick yellow creamy sauce. Baronet's sauce differs from Hollandaise only in taste and strength. Instead of lemon juice, its basic flavoring is a reduction of wine, vinegar, shallots, pepper, and tarragon. So I'm trying to do this all strategically. I have to have a plan in mind with this Baronet sauce because if you do it a little too much in advance, it's gonna thicken up and that's no good. That's what happened to me in the steak free video and it was just not as good as it could have been. I think I know what I need to do. I just gotta execute. Let's go over here. In my saucepan here goes a quarter cup of vinegar, a quarter cup of dry white wine or vermouth, tablespoon of minced shallot, and one tablespoon of minced tarragon. Ooh, one eighth teaspoon of pepper, a pinch of salt. So we're gonna boil the liquid and reduce it down to two tablespoons worth. Get it out of the pan. I gotta let that cool. I'm gonna clean this out. Okay, saucepan's clean, heat is off, everything is cool. Three egg yolks, in they go. Now beat these until they're thickened. Hope everyone's okay. Two tablespoons of the vinegar mix. Strained, of course. 
And then we're gonna beat that in. Tablespoon of chilled butter and get this onto a low heat. Take the butter packaging out and then thicken the egg yolks. Okay, well that sucks. It's too busy worrying about how I was gonna melt some butter. And then I cooked the eggs. I ruined this. So I'm gonna have to redo it all. So I have a pan with cold water right next to me. That's in case this pan gets too hot, I can quickly just dunk it in there. The egg yolks need to be thick and sticky. So I beat it for around a minute. Now I gotta strain in the vinegar mix. Beat that in. Heat is gonna be on super low. And in goes a tablespoon of cold butter. Let that melt into the egg yolks. She says not to beat it in, but use a whisk. So you are beating it in. After beating this in for a minute or two, the butter is melted and the eggs still are uh, A-OK -okay in my books. If they seem to be thickening too quickly or even suggest a lumpy quality, immediately plunge into the cold water. I think we're good. I just gotta come over here for a second. I need another tablespoon of cold butter because the butter I had on standby is now room temperature, but it needs to be cold. Okay, so I can see the bottom of the pan between strokes and the mixture forms a light cream on the wires of the whip. Yeah, I think so. Remove from the heat and then immediately add a tablespoon of cold butter. That's gonna halt the cooking of the eggs. Turn off the heat completely and the other cold tablespoon of butter is in there. So I have half a cup of melted butter and I'm gonna pour this in by the droplets. Remember the heat is off. Quarter teaspoons at a time. Now that the sauce is starting to turn into a very heavy cream, pour the butter a little more rapidly. That's Bernays sauce, I see you. Okay, the remainder of the butter, but do not include all that milky residue at the bottom, no problem. Ah, a little bit didn't hurt. <laughs> Correct the seasoning, a little salt, a little pepper, and two tablespoons of the minced tarragon. Okay, that is the Bernays sauce we all know and love. The only issue right now is that this Bernays sauce is gonna thicken up mightily by the time that the steaks were cooked. So I have an idea that I found on the interwebs. Okay, I have this travel mug for coffee, and I'm just gonna store this in here until the time comes. Bernays sauce to go, anyone? I'm just gonna seal that up. Out of sight, out of mind, until I need it. Hopefully everything works out. If that doesn't work out, I have another idea in my head. Okay, so here's my carbon steel pan, as promised. I hope everyone's okay. Siren or not, we have to keep going here. So a couple tablespoons of butter and just a little bit of oil. My track record tonight isn't great. So I figure why don't I do a steak at a time here just in case I do screw up, then I have a backup plan, you know what I mean? Which one is the blanched bacon? Let's start off with the unblanched bacon first. Okay, the butter foam is subsiding, which is indicating that it is ready for searing. Julia recommends three to four minutes per side. I think I'm gonna go two and a half. Okay, flip it over. Oh, look at that sear! Okay. Base and base and base and base. Let's do the sides of the bacon as well. I know that all this bacon, can you hear me? I know that all the bacon fat is rendering and it's kind of turning into a bit of everything in here. Okay, after two and a half minutes, it's not ready yet, so I'm just gonna leave it on. I'm gonna leave it cooking for another 30 seconds. And remove. Okay, so here's steak number two. I'm not gonna be able to talk to you while this is happening because I need the fan on. 
See you on the other side. The smoke alarm just wouldn't stop screaming, screeching, and screaming, and screeching. I, I have to stop cooking steak in this apartment. As around three quarters of the way through cooking that second steak, I'm not gonna cook it any longer. So if it's medium rare, if it's rare, I'm gonna take the L, but you know, I like rare steak anyway, so it's not a big deal. Somehow in between the smoke alarm going off and the smoke billowing around in this apartment, I seasoned the steaks pretty quickly after I took them off the pan too. I don't know how I did it, but I did it. So the sauteing fats are all poured out of the pan, of course, that was the problem. Okay, so in the pan, I'm gonna add around a quarter cup of beef stock and around a quarter cup of Madeira wine. And a little for good luck. Boil down and reduce to three tablespoons and scraping up all the coagulated stuff, the coagulated fawn. Yeah, I'm, I'm pooped. But uh, the show must go on and the wine must flow. Does 2016 Bordeaux taste any different than a 2018 or a 2020 or a 2022? I'm not the one to ask, unfortunately. I wish I was, but uh, you tell me. Opa! A little more. Let it breathe. On the surface, this may seem just like any other episode, and that may be the case slightly. Every episode is an adventure, I guess that's what I'm trying to say. Let's get everything on deck here. So as I mentioned earlier, I have done up all the sides in advance. So I'll see to this stuff first, and then we'll start bringing on the main event. These right here are canapes. They are slices of baguette that I sauteed in clarified butter. Place the steaks on the canapes. You're probably gonna need two per steak then. Where the steaks keeping warm in here. Cut the string off. The steak on the canapes. Here goes the Madeira sauce on top of each steak. Okay, then the artichoke bottom goes on top. These artichokes are so small. <laughs> okay, that kind of looks ridiculous, but it's also uh, what the doctor ordered. Well, not that one, but this one. And so we got the parsley one down. So the parsley butter potatoes, a couple on each side. Change of plans, asparagus tips. We're gonna get those around the platter first. I just stepped on a potato on the ground. We got the potatoes. The Baronet sauce has been keeping warm. You can go on the very top. Oh my God, that looks amazing. Are you kidding me? Yes, yes, check that out. If this thickens up, I want you to know what it looked like in its prime. I've been incredibly loud here all night, especially with the smoke alarm, and I wasn't gonna really shout order up or anything like that. Order up! feel free to mark that one down as a win. I don't know what I could say right now to entertain anyone. I'm just sitting here by myself. It's late and I'm enjoying my creation. The entire plate of food was spot on. There wasn't something that was too much or too little. I just loved everything about this. The Tornado cooked to my liking, kind of bordering between rare and medium rare. That's what I like. That's what I did. Even if it was kind of a happy accident because of the smoke alarm, doesn't matter, it's delicious. So there is one thing I gotta figure out, and that is between blanched and unblanched bacon. God, 
yeah. Here we go. I couldn't really tell the difference, quite honestly. They both taste like bacon to me. Salty and smoky and, you know, with the unblanched, I almost burnt the house down. Exaggerating, of course, there was just a lot of smoke, but with the blanched, not nearly as much smoke. Fiddling around with this glass, drinking myself into a stupor while I think about things to say about that dish, but you know, all words escape me right now and I kind of blame the wine. I wish I could be one that could just speak eloquently about food, about, you know, each individual thing that I ate and pinpoint all the different flavors and whatnot, but I just not that type of person. Baronet sauce, rich and tangy. What was that, artichoke bottoms? Couldn't really tell that they were there, quite honestly. I mean, it's nice to have a crown on top of my steak, but they kind of got lost in the shuffle, a little more trouble than they're worth. But I wouldn't remove them because there was something clicking with everything. Nice added touch of the toasted canapé on the very bottom, absorbing all that sauce, the, the Madeira sauce and then the sides. Throw in some asparagus potatoes to boot and you have yourself a platter fit for a king. Henry IV to be precise. Okay, I'm gonna go now. This was Jamie and Julia. Bon appetit. Au revoir. <laughs> I'm not gonna tell you what time it is right now, but I am trying to keep it to a dull roar. So if I seem a little less energetic, I'm not. I'm very energetic. I just need to keep it down.